My name is Steve Adamko, and I am a professional interior designer, plus the owner and founder of Spectrum Interiors, established in 1982, based in Kalamazoo and Portage, Michigan. So I'm going to be starting out with a topic that will set the tone and help initialize things here a bit. We're going to be talking about ambiance. Okay. Hey, good to be here with you. We're going to talk about creating ambiance in your residential interior design and decorating, no matter what the budget. Okay, truly in regards to interior design and decorating, it's all about the magic and excitement of ambiance. This goes far beyond a look. How many know what ambiance really is? Well, let's check the dictionary. Well, it says we're talking about a mood, character, quality, tone, or atmosphere of an environment. This is also another definition, that which surrounds or encompasses. The above is a good definition, but what we're talking and looking at when we create ambiance, no matter what the budget is, consider this. Ladies, how does it feel if you wrap yourself in a nylon windbreaker versus a mink coat? Mm. Now, you're the same person in both scenarios, correct? But your emotional feeling, your ambiance, the way you talk, the way you walk is different. Is that true? You know it is. So you actually put on a different demeanor in a sense or a more expansive demeanor of yourself, correct? That's what we're going to be talking about. Now, I've taken the above definitions and expanded on them a little bit more. So here's my definition of ambiance. Ambiance is the intangible element of an interior that touches the heart, the soul, the mind, and the emotions that is visually appealing, intellectually stimulating, emotionally satisfying, and totally enriching for the occupants and their guests. Now, the same magic that creates excitement can also induce calm. So it can do several things at the same time. It provides a haven and creates a backdrop or background for the occupants and their possessions so that they are the gems in their own setting. So think of photography. You want to have a portrait made of your family and a photographer that is really good is going to choose the correct backdrop that really brings out the very best in you or you and your family. And like jewelry, you are the gem. You are the ruby. You are the diamond. We want to position you in such a way that your setting or your environment brings out the whole character, the quality, the fire, the color of your personality because you're unique and there is nobody like you in the whole world. That's correct, isn't it? So why is ambiance so important? I'll be quite frank with you. Without ambiance, you end up with basically just a quote unquote look. And a look to me doesn't really incorporate the depth of your personality and character as well as other attributes of that nature. It's rather superficial. And it doesn't express the true treasure that's in you as a unique individual. So the big question is, why do so few people have ambiance? Number one is they try to follow a trend or fad. Now, both of those things come and go, so it's very easy to get locked into a time warp eventually, just like a time capsule. It can get outdated at a certain point if you don't handle things correctly. And quite frankly, a lot of things that are perpetuated out there in the furniture and furnishings industry, or even in the fashion and clothing world, are there to perpetuate the idea of constant change so as to keep up the selling. In other words, they want to keep selling you more. Nothing wrong with that, but it's typically done to create in you a continual state of dissatisfaction. But everybody knows that there are certain things that you look best in, certain cuts of clothing that you look best in. If that doesn't happen to be the fad or trend at the time, then where are you? The fad is not your friend. There should be enough, and there is enough, literally, in the world today that it shouldn't really matter what the current fad or trend is, especially if it's unappealing, unflattering, or inappropriate for you. Anybody can look outside and see the beauty of nature throughout all the seasons, summer, winter, fall, and spring. But is there a fad for this color or that color in nature? Do you ever hear that red roses are in this year and next year they won't be? Isn't that kind of interesting to contemplate that thought? Very often people try to take what they've seen in magazines without a full understanding of how does this really mesh with my personality? How does this mesh with where I live geographically? How does this mesh with my architecture, the type of home I have, or the lifestyle that I live? 
So knowing yourself is a very, very important first step. So now that we know what ambiance is, and it's a mood, character, quality, tone, atmosphere, particularly of an environment, it is the intangible element that you experience that makes a room seem magical. Creating ambiance is more than creating a quote-unquote look. It goes way beyond that. Many looks just seem to be superficial. Actually, they are superficial, and they lack the depth and draw power that a room with real substance has. It is very much like a person who has depth of personality. They may look beautiful or handsome, but they also have personality. Plus, the more you, well, some of them aren't even beautiful or handsome, but they have personality plus. So the more you get to know them, the more you want to know them and the things about them that make them so unique and memorable. They draw you in, they vitalize you, they invigorate you. Isn't that the way you want your home or room to be described? I hope so. These same personality plus people come from all walks of life. Some are subdued, some are gregarious, some are mild manner, some are racy, but you get what I mean. The same thing happens in wonderful rooms. They also come in various looks, colors, themes, and backgrounds. But rooms of excellence have ambiance regardless of the degree of formality or informality. The first step to obtaining ambiance is to define it. Not just the dictionary version, but your version. How do we do that? With words, word pictures. Words are containers for expressing and articulating thoughts, ideas, and emotions. So what kind of words shall we use to define your ambiance? The answer is adjectives. We'll use adjectives to define our objective. Adjectives will give form and substance to the intangible aspect of ambiance. This is particularly helpful for those who don't have the ability to visualize well. So I asked the client to answer this question by describing or explaining to me, what do you want this room or home to feel like? The usual response is this, I want my home to feel cozy and comfortable. Can you see the necessity of getting beyond that definition and the need to go much deeper? so that you can have the kind of ambiance that is the unique expression of you and not like so many others who have not taken the time to get below the surface issues? My next question is to ask, what does cozy and comfortable mean to you? How do you define that? At this point, many say, well, I just never thought about it. Or, gosh, I've never thought about it that deeply before. Bingo! That's why they have never experienced any ambiance in their home or homes their whole life. Now is the time to change all that and get you to experiencing your environment on a much higher level and in a much deeper way. Now, I'm telling you all this to stimulate your own mind so that it enables you to dig deeper into being able to express your true self in your own environment. And that's what it really I'm all about. All my designs are personally tailored to each and every client, with the result being orchestrated with the desired ambiance that is seen, felt, understood, and experienced. So I work in a broad range and spectrum of residential and commercial design, as well as furniture and lighting design. For those people who really can't afford the services of an interior designer such as myself, I also offer teleseminars, webinars, and seminars. So that's a way to get things on the right kind of plane. Hi, this is Steve Adam, Co Spectrum Interiors. Uh, I'm starting a new series here called uh, Let's Talk About Dot Dot Dot. So this first installment, we're going to talk about lighting and how important it is. Uh, most lighting that's done today is done not without a whole lot of plan. And uh, it's especially important in brand new homes or remodels that a floor uh, plan is done and then a reflected ceiling plan is done on top of that. So. Uh, so we know exactly where our light is positioned and it's based on what we really want the lighting plan to accomplish for us. And that all revolves strongly around ambiance, mood, and feeling. Okay, so the idea is that we want to see the effects of the lighting, not just the lighting sources themselves. Now in certain cases like chandeliers and things, 
the aesthetical value of the fixture is very important just as the lighting is very important. Another aspect is that the more we can zone lighting and put different fixtures uh, on uh, dimmers or rheostats, the better we are because it gives us a broader range of play with the uh, emotion that can be generated by the space. In addition to that, we need to know how dark or light the space is going to be, what kind of textures, what kind of materials, things of that nature, and uh, what it is that we're going to be lighting, whether it's cocktail tables, seating groups, uh, artwork, sculpture, and all of that. So I'm going to just cover very briefly three different lamp styles or bulb styles. The lamp is what the professionals call them. And I'm going to start first with the one that most people are acquainted with and that is the A lamp or the, the you know typical bulb that would go into a regular table lamp. Okay, the situation with this is that light is emanating in all directions. So there is no particular control of this. All right. And uh, then we have another type called a reflector lamp. And these are usually in spots or floods. And so it's very focused lighting that goes out in a direction like that because it has a base reflector. Now a spot is going to be tighter and a flood is going to be wider angle. All right. Now a refinement of that concept is a bulb like this. It's called an MR16. You can see that relative to the reflector lamp, it's quite a bit smaller. Now this operates off 120 volts. This is low voltage, or let's say 12 volts. It takes a transformer to step down the, 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 the voltage so that you can, you can operate these things. But these are much more controlled, and on top of that, they're also color corrected. They're much more balanced. You'll see these, when I say color corrected, we're talking about, let's say, the, the, the uh, the color circle, the rainbow, you know, all of the colors that you have, it's very balanced in a warm and cool spectrum and so it renders cool colors and warm colors very equally. Okay, that's why they're used in jewelry stores because a diamond uh, uh, splits light into the colors of the rainbow and that's part of what they call fire. So they want those gems to have a lot of fire, a lot of spark, a lot of color. These types of lighting, lighting uh, fixtures or bulbs accomplish that. Okay, now in addition to that, uh, if we look at, uh, let's say, the wall and the ceiling, okay, uh, the way a, a fixture is positioned, depending on what it is you want to light, determines a lot of things. Let's say we're, this is going to be a piece of artwork, and depending on how low or high the ceiling is, is going to depend on where we position that lamp and what angle we attack it from, so to speak. So you can see that if, if we were to say uh, put a center line of this lamp and it strikes the center of this art object, each lamp is going to have a different beam spread and a different intensity uh, to it. Okay, so we would have to determine well how much light do we want to put on this surface or this artwork? How far away is the source going to be? What's the beam spread? How tight do we need this? Like if we need more control than that, that MR16 lamp comes in, you know, narrow spot, spot, flood, things of that nature. Um, so what we're trying to work around here is a concept and, and uh, called photometrics. Okay, photometrics is all about the performance of these bulbs, like beam spread, intensity, and it will, you know, the further away light travels, the less intense it becomes. You get up close to a light that's very, very bright. You get way back from it. Obviously, it's not as, as brilliant or as intense. And you can consider a concept very similar to um, the old-fashioned screw-on type um, nozzle on a hose. If you open it up, it just sprays out very wide and, and very gently. Okay, you can wash your car that way. If you screw it down tight, you, now you have a pencil stream of water that can knock dirt off a sidewalk or other things and if you're in a nice water fight it, it will go out and touch somebody you know uh, and it will travel a lot farther so it's the same kind of concept in other words uh, and, and the wattage too is kind of like pressure the, uh, the, the more pressure is applied the further it goes out so you know a 40 watt just doesn't have as much push and 
and, and punch as 100, 150, 300 watt, that type of thing. So we want to understand that it, the lamp does the job, it's not the holder or the can. Uh, that, that acts as like your hand, okay? It just holds it, that's all, and directs it. Uh, it's the lamp that does the job. And so we have to work at this lighting plan backwards. We have to determine what kind of effect, what kind of lighting illumination levels to, to bring in a lot of variety and a lot of interest and to, uh, you know, let's say enhance textures. If a wall is very textured, we might want to have lighting that's in a, in a row that's grazing the wall. The light beam is coming down to accentuate the texture. If you take a bunch of lamp fixtures and you know that if you could come at it directly you could take a textured surface and actually flatten it in other words it, it looks flatter and not textured basically because there's no shadowing okay so that will give you a little bit of understanding about the intricacies and also the um, available aspects of how to handle lighting in a proper way to get the most for everything that you do to make the architecture come alive to make the furniture come alive to have more ambiance mood and variety within the space. All right, so we'll take up on this and in other topics here in further series and in further installments. This is Steve Adamco, Spectrum Interiors, wishing you a very wonderful day. All right. Thank you to everybody that tuned in. I hope you really enjoyed it. Folks, have a good one today. I'll tell you what, it's always better to be of excellence than average or mediocre. Who wants to be average or mediocre? Nobody wants that. So let's step up to the plate. Let's not get pulled in by things that are not of excellence, whether you see it on TV or HGTV. That doesn't mean it's the best out there. So, let's wake up and smell the coffee, okay? All right, people, we'll catch you later. Enjoy the rest of this music. Have yourself a wonderful day. You know what I say all the time? I don't do ugly, okay? Don't you do ugly either. There's enough of it out there already. We need to start banishing that and get on the high side of looking good, all right? Enjoy the day as we close out with this bit of music.
Thank you.